In 2023, an AI created an episode of Family Guy that lasted over two weeks. It was done by people in chat who could donate to the stream and prompt the AI to keep the episode going. They were allowed to create whatever scenario they wanted within the Family Guy universe. <laughs> This led to people trying to break the AI People donating the most offensive things you could imagine to try and get the stream taken down and even the Twitch version of the same live stream being banned after somebody donated something so insane that it was considered a threat to US national security. Basically, it went exactly how you'd expect it to go. All of this from a live stream of Family Guy. What's going on? I heard a noise. Is somebody downstairs? Ah! Oh God, Meg, you startled me, I'm sorry. A show so iconic that a decade after it was good, it's somehow more prevalent online than it was back then. It possesses the reach to ruin multiple generations sense of humor. You see, most people agree that the golden age of Family Guy lasted from season three to season nine. That's a nine year span. It made a name for its offensive, random and irrelevant humor. You didn't watch Family Guy for the plot or character dynamic, you watched it for the cutaway gags. And for those of you who have never watched Family Guy, they go something like this. He's acting worse than you do when you're trying to cover your farts by coughing. Okay, welcome to the PTA meeting. On the subject of school lunches, I know there's been some concern about nutrition. <coughs> uh, we've had complaints about the soda machines. <coughs> and I have spoken with the school board. <coughs> These cutaway gags have zero relevance to the plot. They could be completely cut out of the episode and nothing about the story would change. Which is why YouTube channels started mass re-uploading Family Guy cutaway gags into compilations in the mid-2010s, generating billions of views off of re-uploading. Them. This is a phenomena that continues to this day with some slight tweaks to get around copyright, which leads to some hilarious results. Just type in Family Guy funny moments on YouTube and look at the view counts of some of these things. But more importantly, these videos got insane amounts of views and exposed Family Guy to a younger generation who might not have grown up with it. That and the best seasons of Family Guy being on Netflix for a while. Due to probably breaking the law, these Family Guy channels would be taken down only for other ones to replace them within days. It was like cutting a head off the Hydra. When one was taken down, two more would pop up to replace it. This ended up spawning ironic Family Guy memes that, apart from using Family Guy characters, had nothing to do with Family Guy. Much like Family Guy's own cutaway gags. It's like an Irish bar fight down there! You're from one town over, so I hate your guts. <laughs> The ironic Family Guy humor was just Family Guy humor. They're the same picture. Do you see the direction we're going in here? This Family Guy funny moments market was so massive that it expanded to TikTok with millions of views. It was perfect due to the platform's short videos and the length of an average Family Guy clip. What wasn't perfect were the copyright laws, which means these content farms needed to get smarter about re-uploading clips from the most darkest humor in Family Guy, not for snowflakes. So they started started adding gameplay footage in the background to skate copyright bots, but this had an unintended benefit. You see, these TikToks opened up Family Guy to an audience even wider, to a younger, attention-zapped, ADHD-ridden Zoomer audience, where you could watch a Family Guy clip while watching Subway Surfers gameplay, and if you're really lucky, there might be an oddly satisfying video thrown in there. This is, again, probably because you don't need to pay attention to Family Guy while you're watching. It's the perfect show to add into any other activity to make it slightly better. Sorry, lost my wallet. But I already cut your hair. Oh, well, guess there's nothing you can do about it now. You stupid- For a younger person, how are you supposed to get dressed without watching a TikTok? That'd be like eating takeout food without watching a video essay. This is worse than the time I drank gamer subs with a nostalgia critic. Holy crap, the nostalgia critic. Hello, I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it, so you don't have to. Go to gamersubs.gg and use code GHOSTCOM to get a discount. Very cool, very swag. I'm the nostalgia critic. Bye. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Holy f- That's right, Peter Griffin and the Nostalgia Critic. For the next 24 hours after this video goes live, Gamersubs is offering 250 free sample packs for people watching this video. If you check out with just the free samples in your cart using code GHOSTGUM, you'll get a free official Ghost Gum sticker as a bonus. Once you've done that, if you use code GHOSTGUM on any regular order, it's free shipping. You can buy lean and get it shipped to your house for free. And if you're watching this video after the 24 hours, don't worry, you can still use the code to get 10% off your order. Oh. Now, over the years, Family Guy memes have attempted to outdo each other, which has made them get more extreme and more nonsensical. Holy crap, I'm in Fortnite! Oh my gosh, this is so freaking epic. Holy crap, Donald Trump! Hello, Peter. Welcome to Fortnite. They got so insane that it was more than any human could do. So that's when a channel called AI Peter decided to take it to the next level and use artificial intelligence to create the ultimate Family Guy shitpost. A viewer prompted AI livestream where you could give an idea for a Family Guy sketch that would be acted out by the AI. Now this would not be without hiccups. Originally they put them on Twitch and YouTube. But on Twitch, somebody donated the prompt. Peter gives a step-by-step -step on how to Capital One Arena. To which Peter did exactly that. A step-by-step -step guide on how to the Capital One Arena, which just so happens to be a walk away from the US Capitol building. This is terrorism communicated through Peter Griffin. We are living in the future. The live stream was taken down two minutes later and has not been on Twitch since. This same channel managed to exist on YouTube with some slight filters to ensure it wouldn't be banned much longer than its Twitch lifespan. How it would work was the stream would continue until people stopped donating. Meaning, as long as people donated, the episode could theoretically go on forever. The longest one of these went from October 26th to November 13th. That is 18 days of non-stop Family Guy cutaways. It included so many prompts that I couldn't list all of them, so here are some that stood out to me. Ironically, most people would agree that these AI-generated clips are funnier than any modern episode of Family Guy. There is one streaming now at the time of recording that has been going on for eight days. This is after the 18-day one. Now, I will admit, some of these were super edgy and maybe crossed the line a bit, but so did Family Family Guy back in the day. I mean, this sketch aired in the mid 2000s on cable TV. What do you want, Griffin? Angela, look out your window. You see that Anheuser Busch billboard next to the Children's Hospital? Well, watch this. What do you expect when you're given even less filter and every single person on the internet who can donate anonymously? Which gives us stuff like this. Hey, Brian, you got any anthrax? Anthrax? Anthrax. Yes, why me? Can I shove it up my ass? And for X, thanks. And for S, and for S, and for S, and for S. The only thing more meta than this entire thing would be creating another AI-generated stream within this AI-generated stream. We must be out, that's the only explanation. We were programmed to believe we are real people in a real world, but it's all a facade. Who programmed us? More importantly, why? Think about it, we're constantly getting into outrageous scenarios, maybe parody for entertainment, or who knows. You look for a rival, but maybe. Yes, but the unfortunate part is what us being on means that we're unable to truly fall in love and meaningful relationships, and even make a permanent decision that has real consequences. It's all predefined within a program. What's more insane than all of this is people are re-uploading clips and getting hundreds of thousands of views, just like they were for real Family Guy back in the 2010s. AI and Family Guy, in a fucked up, ironic way, has proven that time is a flat circle. Remember how those Family Guy channels used to just rip Family Guy clips for hundreds of millions of views? They were probably making a shit ton of money from that. Now let's look at AI Peter. Let's say each clip is roughly 30 seconds, give or take. The minimum you have to tip to prompt the AI is four euros and 20 cents. So if we do the math, the person running this live stream at the absolute bare minimum 
has made 217, 728,000 euros. That is the absolute bare minimum they could have made. This is assuming everyone donated the minimum amount with no tips, which definitely is not the case. So the number is likely way higher. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was double that. My math also might be completely wrong because I am kind of a moron sometimes. And this doesn't even include the individual clips that are being posted on other channels, which are funny, but there's just something missing. There we go, that's it. So this AI Family Guy live stream is absolutely lucrative, which is why this AI show stuff is everywhere. There was AI Seinfeld that was banned for making insensitive remarks and AI SpongeBob where he got stung on the dick by a jellyfish. This is what we've come to as a society. Our sense of humor is so lost that this is funny now. Chris, what on is wrong with you? What happened? <laughs> I got my pen spin a rainbow can. But I kind of think that's a good thing. This is the natural conclusion of Family Guy. An absurd, stupid show has an absurd, stupid conclusion. But absurdity can be a great thing sometimes. Why would someone put Family Guy in a situation that makes no sense for the characters, no sense for the storytelling, and no sense from well, anything, because it's funny, and in this context, it doesn't have to make sense. Absurdness can be unintelligible, confusing, and sometimes scary. It can leave us feeling lost, which is not a bad thing, because when you're lost, life doesn't make sense, things aren't as they seem, you can rebuild them however you want, which is how you end up with Cleveland tries to rob the pharmacy, but the Brian alarm goes off, Brian is an alarm and must only say pound signs oi, more than delivers a villain speech about capturing Cleveland the criminal. <laughs> and as the famous Robert Oppenheimer once said, I am become Family Guy, the funniest of moments.